Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Kentucky Small Business Development Center's weekly webinar. We're glad you're here today. As we allow our attendees a few moments to join our event, I'd like to share some info about the Kentucky Small Business Development Center program. As the only statewide nationally accredited program that provides entrepreneurial and business development services, the Kentucky SBDC plays a vital role in the Commonwealth's economic development by assisting entrepreneurs at every stage of their business life cycle. For almost 40 years, the Kentucky SBDC has assisted emerging and growing businesses by providing professional expertise, tools, and information necessary to make sound business decisions in a complex and ever-changing marketplace. We do this at no cost to our clients, thanks to the U.S. Small Business Administration, who co-sponsors our program, which is then administered by the University of Kentucky, who partners with regional universities, colleges, and local economic development agencies. We're part of a national network, America's SBDC, with over 1,000 centers across the nation. To learn more, please visit KentuckySBDC.com, and there you'll find resources to help start, fund, and grow your business. To request personal assistance, email us at info at KentuckySBDC.com or call us at 1-888-475-7232. little housekeeping, just a reminder, we will be sending you later on today a recording of today's webinar. And if you look to your right of your screen, you'll find the chat feature. So if you have any questions to our uh, presenter today, we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. So please take a second to uh, try it out. Say hello and tell us where you're from. I always like to hear from everybody. There's May. How are you? Just got your email this morning. I'll be getting back to you later on today. Good to see you. There's Dave William from Louisville. So, um, and as always, I'm Dave Etkin. I'm uh, the director here at the Louisville Small Business Development Center. We're one of 13 centers throughout the Commonwealth, so we're pretty close to everybody. With me today, we have a fabulous uh, presenter because, um, you know, if you remember earlier in the month, we did talk about, um, uh, you know, ways to set up your LinkedIn and um, kind of move your business forward. And um, every day uh, I'm in the office here with Jordan and he just kills it on LinkedIn. And I said, Jordan, how about share, sharing some of that secret sauce with the world out there and, um, you know, taking it to the next level. And, you know, he lives it. So I thought, let's just, let's just go away to the start. So Jordan, how are you? I'm good, Dave. Thanks for having me. Plug for Dave and the SBDC. I talk to people all day long in my role, business owners, budding entrepreneurs, people looking to start businesses, get connected to resources, and I send them Dave's way, and they're always so happy to meet him. He's always so helpful. So please reach out to Dave and SBDC. They're a great resource, fantastic yeah. team there that can help you with any and all of your business questions. Yeah, thanks. I guess I should kind of introduce you a little bit, Jordan. You're, you're the Investor Development Manager here at Greater Louisville, Inc., which is the Chamber of Commerce here in Louisville. And uh, he works with, there are almost 2,000 members and investor companies, and he just, uh, you know, helps can make connections, fosters goodwill amongst all of them. And uh, he, he really does this every day and, and it does a great job. So with that, Jordan, I, th I think I should just turn over to you and just quit, uh, quit talking and let's, let's, let's get into it, right? Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave. Really excited to be here today. Happy to share some of my experience with LinkedIn. I'm by no means a pro whatsoever. I've just been using the platform for uh, going on um, seven years or so, and there's no secret sauce. Just habitually um, use these three simple steps every morning to grow my network, and I'm just here to share those with you today. I, I'm going to keep it really simple. LinkedIn isn't complicated. There's a ton of value to uncover there, and um, let's just jump right in. So again, a little bit more about me. Dave went over a little bit of this. I work at Greater Louisville, Inc. It's the Metro Chamber of Commerce in Louisville. Our mission is to grow the regional economy. Again, he said we have about 2,000 investors, 15 county footprint. My role at GLI is to uh, manage the relationships of those investors. I'm their main point of contact here at the chamber, and um, I, I get them whatever they need. I connect them around and uh, basically help them grow their businesses. So along with that comes investor development. I help them discover resources that we have here and take advantage of the chamber and then recruitment. So a big part of my job is to go out and talk about the things that we do, bring other people in, um, get them in the fold and help them grow their businesses. So with my role at GLI, LinkedIn really plays a very, very um, important part 
of doing all of these things. <clears throat> and with the pandemic and not being able to get out and shake hands and meet people in person, um, if I didn't have this to fall back on, I, I really don't know what I would have done as far as connecting with my community, staying top of mind and, you know, continuing to do business development. So it's, it's a nice, it's, it's more than a nice to have. It's, it's really a need to have as far as having a strategy for um, utilizing this platform in your professional role. So just a little bit of background to give you a, um, a sense of why I started using LinkedIn. So it was 2013 and I was a 25 year old brand new financial advisor, which is probably the last person that most people want to get coffee with. And once I started in that industry, the, the um, advice that I got to meet people was go knock on some doors and cold call. <laughs> so that was sort of the response I had to it then. And it's the response I have to it now. You don't have to do that. There are a lot smarter, more strategic ways to get in front of people. So LinkedIn is naturally where I turned. And the reason why I use LinkedIn is so people would know, like, and trust me, which is the basis for any business relationship um, to expand my network beyond people that I literally don't have the capacity to meet in a single day in person. You can meet anybody on LinkedIn and to just become a thought leader, to share my thoughts on, you know, my industry, how to go about networking, things in my community. You can do all of this there, but those are my main reasons. And when I started in 2013, these three steps I will talk to you about are, are basically what I did to grow my network. There's no um, paid sales navigator or anything like that. It's just consistent habitual use. So since then, uh, I've got about 5,600 followers or connections. Um, through this process, I make about 10 to 15 meaningful new connections every day. Uh, these, um, the 1% in social selling index, it's a stat that LinkedIn has to show, I guess, how active you are, how well you utilize the platform. Most of my business is sourced on LinkedIn. So really proud to be able to say that. And it's a great place to just have tons of active conversations. Okay. So again, this will just sound deceptively easy and it is, it kind of is if, um, that's, that's all I have to say about it. It's very easy. Just one, two, three step process that I follow every single morning. So number one, just post at least once per day. You get the best engagement in the morning. It's best to just fire up your computer and get something out there so that you don't have to worry about putting it on your schedule or worry about getting back to it later. Once you do that, you're going to connect with people who engage with you. That's step two. And then from there, you're just going to start a conversation with those that connect with you. Simple. There's absolutely nothing more to it than that. Anybody can do this with any LinkedIn platform. The free version is more than enough to, um, to make this process successful. But, but that's it. One, two, three. Post once per day. Connect with those who engage with you and start a conversation. So let's dig into these just a little bit more. All right. We'll start with posting at least once per day. So again, preferably in the morning, engagement is highest. Engagement is highest there. Um, so why do we want to do this? So if you make it a habit, it takes all the guesswork and all the stress out of when do I post? Um, how often do I need to be doing it? Am I posting enough? Just once per day. That's it. Very, very easy. That's all that I do. Sometimes I do more, but I, this is the this is the minimum and often exactly what I do every day. You are going to be more favorable to the LinkedIn algorithms. If you post consistently, if they see you using the platform more, your posts are going to rank higher. More people are going to see your stuff. So visibility, you want people to be seeing you very often. Um, LinkedIn is a great place to get your face out there, your name out there and your business out there. So that whenever maybe you can have a sales conversation or a referrals conversation, people are familiar with you. So posting frequently helps with your visibility. And really, the goal of LinkedIn is to show people that you have value to give. So if you post habitually once per day, people will continually see you providing value to people on a day by day basis, which, you know, increases your social capital. So that's the why. It's, it's very simple. And so what do I post? This can be maybe something that's a little bit more nuanced. But once you get in the rhythm of it, um, it's, it's really not too hard. So I'm in the in the chamber world. Anything business news related 
is fair game for me. I would just suggest post something relevant to your industry, post something relevant to your community, post something that people that you want to be connected with and want to be talking to would find value in. It's not pictures of your cat. It's hard to say, maybe once, maybe every once in a while, but that's not what you're gonna be posting a lot, but um, post things that you want people to think of um, you whenever they read. Never spam people. Those are not received very well. Um, you can ask for feedback on something, but if you just continuous, continually offer services or uh, solicit, um, you're not gonna get anywhere very fast. Uh, motivational posts are always really, really great. These are good ones for Monday morning. You know, something that gets people going, that makes them smile, that um, will help gas up their tank for the business week. Those are always good go-tos. Make sure you tag people in your posts. Again, this is going back to those algorithms. The more people you tag or the businesses you tagged, um, you'll get a lot more traction on your post. So if you can, try to make sure that you tag businesses. And the last, um, the last thing on this is prompt a discussion when you can. I always like to try to ask a question, try to engage a discussion, get some feedback from people. And then in your comments, you can start to have dialogue back and forth with folks and start to develop those business relationships. So that's the why and the what. And here are a couple examples. I hope that you can see these. Maybe I should have put them on individual slides, but if not, I'm more than happy to send you these examples um, as a follow up. But on the left there, it was a business first article about El Toro. They're a hot company in town. There's a lot of excitement around them and this new development of theirs. I simply shared the article, I congratulated the business owners. I tagged each of them. Some I was connected to, some I wasn't. I'm now connected to all of them because of this. And then I tagged the business there. Again, so sorry if you can't see it. Um, but the one in the middle was a picture of a Louisville mural that I took. Again, it's community centric. And um, I posted that. And then if you can't see the last line on there is which local murals are you a fan of? So I got 16 comments on that, some good traction. You know, it's something fun for people to do. And we do have a lot of great murals here. So it was a lot of fun to see some of the some of the pictures that people posted. And then this last one was an article of the reopening of a restaurant downtown Louisville, which was really exciting. I basically just asked people who wanted to come have a burger with me. And I, <laughs> I got a ton of comments. My burger calendar filled up super fast, but um, this is just a good example of posting something relevant to your community, tagging whenever you can, and prompting discussion. These were all really successful, and they, you don't have to overthink it. They took two seconds to put together. Okay, so you post it in the morning. You're going to do this every morning as soon as you open the computer. So now what do you do? What do you, what do, you do with the engagement from these posts? So you're going to reach out, and you're going to connect with people who engage with you. You've got your first degree connections. These are maybe people you imported from your address book or people that you just connected with you know, organically. But as you continue to post and your posts get traction, people in your first degree networks connections are going to start seeing your posts and reacting to them and there'll be second degree connections for you. I'll show you a little bit more about what this means, but you're gonna reach out and connect with those folks. Why? Well, they saw your post, they saw your name, face, and business, and they found it engaging enough to like it. So they're familiar with you. They, they, know, they know who you are. Um, again, they found your post valuable, engaging, or fun. So they found something of use in that. Um, I think that that is an open invitation in my mind, and this has worked well for me, to reach out and connect with them. So how do we do this? Again, we're just talking about second degree connections here. You can certainly engage with some of your first degree connection engagement, but if we're just looking to grow our networks, I just focus on the second degree connections. So I'll show you in the next slide how to get to those. But before you just reach out and connect with every single person, I would suggest vetting them to whatever degree that you feel comfortable. You know, I like to make sure people are in the Louisville area, that's a good place to start. I look at the profile a little bit, make sure that they're not a bot or someone that just is not valuable to be connected to and um, do that. Most of the people that are gonna engage with your content are probably people that are in your community, I would guess. But you know, you can expand your network beyond your community if you'd like. It just depends on who you wanna be connected to, but make sure that you vet them. Whenever you reach out to connect to them, always, always include a message. It's not the default. The default is just to press a, I think you just press a button twice and then it sends them a canned message and 
you look like every single other person that's reaching out, connecting to people. But if you send a message, that will make you stand out from 99% of all those people out there that are reaching out and connecting. It's going to take you way further and it's very minimal effort. And along with that, relate your message to the post that they um, engaged on. That's going to come in handy later. It's a nice way to open up the conversation. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy, but I'll show you exactly what I mean as, as far as that being useful for later. So we're going to connect with people that engage with your posts that you're going to post at least once each morning. This is why we connect with them and how we connect with them. So this is an example of what it's going to look like for you to do this. When you go to your notifications and you see the engagement on your posts, it's going to pull up like this window on the left. And then the reactions down here at the bottom, there's going to be little ellipses in the last circle. You're going to click on that and then it's going to open up this box with all the people that have reacted to your post. You're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of that. That's going to be where your second degree connections are. All these people gave your post a thumbs up or they loved it or they thought it was insightful. To me, this is an invitation to connect. So I go through and I click on all of these people. I figure out if they're someone in the community that I think it would be beneficial to connect to and I reach out and connect to them. It's very simple. Every single post, every single post, I do this. You get notified when new people engage with it. Um, your content can go a long way. It doesn't just go the day that you post it. So these are all people that know your name, have seen your face and found your content engaging. Reach out and talk to them. Get connected with them. Okay, so we've posted once each morning. We have reached out and connected with people who have engaged with our content who are not already connected to us. We've got a great start here. Our connection numbers are going up. People are starting to learn more about us and what we do in the community and how we can maybe help them if they need our help. So where, where does the magic happen? Here's where it happens. You're gonna start a conversation with all of these folks that you connect with, okay? So why, why should we do this? I, I don't know, I'm guessing, but I would say this is probably one of the most underutilized um, features of the entire platform, but this is, this is what makes the entire difference. So, if you, so why would we wanna do this? If you don't start a conversation with people that you connect to, they're just a number. You're, they're in your network, you've, you've you just you know, had a, a virtual interaction with them and they saw your content, but if you don't reach out and talk to them, they're not gonna remember who you are probably. You'll have no basis for reaching out to them and asking them for a referral or anything down the line because you've never started a conversation with them. So we're gonna start a conversation with all these people we connect with that will stand, help you stand out from, again, probably 99.9% .9 of other people on the platform. So, um, and when you think of why you wanna do this, it's, it's networking, right? You wouldn't go to a, a networking event just exchange business cards with somebody and turn around and walk away without having a conversations about anything. That's exactly what's happening here. You know, think about it in those terms. You want to find some value, ask some questions, ask them, you know, how they are. You'll get in the groove of, of how you go about doing this, but you always want to start a conversation. So how don't, don't get too in your head about this. It can be a little intimidating at first and, you know, it's a professional platform. You definitely want to keep it professional, but just have a natural conversation. Ask them, you know, ask them questions. Ask them, um, you know, how they are. Or again, when I said relate your connection message to the post, that's going to be the first message in the conversation. So just jump off of that. The El Toro post that I posted, when I reached out to connect with folks, I said, thanks for liking my El Toro post. Would you like to connect? And then once they connect, I'll say, thanks for connecting. Have you checked out their space yet? Simple. They're interested in the, in the development. They commented on it. So um, just jump off with that. Ask some questions exactly like you would networking. It's very, very simple. You can even go to their profiles, do some research, find some common connections with them. Um, you know, don't get too creepy or anything, but some overarching things. You went to school together or uh, you share a common connection. It's, it's, it's very, very simple. Again, networking norms, just think about what you would say if you met this person at a, at a networking event. <clears throat> Number one rule, maybe I should have put this first. Do not try to sell people as soon as you open up the conversation. 
that is a great way to ruin your relationship with them from the very get go. Use, use your sales method, whatever you think that might be to get them to the phone or to get them to start having a conversation about whatever it is you do, if you can help them with that. But if the first thing you say to them is, Hey, book a time with me so I can talk to you about your, um, you know, financial planning, you're going to get about that many responses that are favorable. Uh, and I think that makes sense to everyone. If that's ever happened to you, it left a bad taste in your mouth. So um, hard, fast rule, do not hard sell folks when you start talking to them. So this is what this looks like after a period of time. So you can see um, Corinne, she engaged with a post of mine about Kentucky Kingdom recently. So when I reached out to connect with her, she was a second degree connection. I had not met her previously. I said, thanks for liking my Kentucky Kingdom post. Would you like to connect? Simple. She, it's a personal message. It asks, it asks permission to connect. And then she said, yes, I would. So I don't think I've gotten back to her yet, but a natural thing would say, do you plan on going to the park this summer? Or um, if you look at exactly what her role is in the, in the community, something based on that, but it's, it's a jumping off point already. You're not, um, you're not starting cold. You've connected over some sort of topic. Just take it from there. And as you can see on the left, as you start doing this, post once a day, connect with people who engage with you and message them. It's just going to line up all of these conversations that you can be having. It's, it's, it's really amazing because you can take your time with them, give people their attention that they need. You're not on your toes thinking about something to say um, right on the phone. And um, it just it will be constant, constant um, flow of people that you just you know open up conversations with. That's that's the road to business development. That's the road to professional relationships, having conversations, connecting with people, you know, finding the value. So those are the those are the three steps. It's it's very simple. That is probably deceptively simple. Um, but I'm just here to say that I'm no whiz whatsoever. I started doing this back in 2013, but now here I am giving a talk on the subject. So it's worked for me. So as a result of doing this all of these years for me, first thing in the morning habitually is the keyword here. I've expanded my network well beyond who I could just meet physically in person. All of these people I've talked to, I've met, LinkedIn is a platform by which I've met them and we may not have met otherwise. So just think of all the opportunities out there. Uh, more conversations, again, we just talked about that. The more conversations you're having, the better, the better for, for your network, the better for your business development, the better for your personal relationships. I've met tons of people on LinkedIn who I, you know, I've developed friendships with. That's obviously not why we're here, but um, you know, everyone's out here trying to just make a living and do their best and connect. So connect with them, talk to people. Industry influence, again, the more that you post and um, the better you get at providing content and providing something valuable to your network, people will start to turn to you when they have questions about stuff. If you let people know exactly how you can help and show how you're helping, when you can help these people, they're gonna think of you because you've posted so much. So you'll gain some influence. Meaningful insight. I, we're all in our own little bubbles. I'm fortunate that I can be outward facing in the community, but the more people you connect with and have conversations with and, and, um, and see their, their posts, you're going to know what's happening in your business community, especially right now when we're all at home staring at the computers, you can feel so disconnected LinkedIn and growing your network is a great way to get powerful insight into what's happening in your community. Just by doing this, you will have such a greater awareness of the things going on, which is you know valuable to you and valuable to everyone you talk to. And then at the end of the day, it's more sales. So if you're in business development, um, like I am, that's that's what we're trying to do here. It's 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 make sales and get people using the product that we have and help them out. And by doing this, again, I source probably ninety plus percent of my sales from LinkedIn and they come in by this exact process that I just showed you. Nothing, nothing else, nothing slick, nothing uh, that I have to pay however much a month it is for, for LinkedIn. Um, sales navigator, I've tried that. It's just, there's no value in that for me. It, it's simple. You just, just do this every day and, um, and, you, and you'll grow your network. 
and you'll see all of these results. So if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to just show you very quickly how this is done. So it's nice to see it on a slideshow. I hope that I kept it simple enough where you understand why and you see the value and you can do this tomorrow morning and say, oh, that wasn't that hard. The hard part is just keeping it up. So let me show you in person exactly what this looks like. Okay, so I'm just gonna trust everyone can see my screen unless someone tells me otherwise. Here is LinkedIn. Here's where I'm at the, every morning. It's a little late in the day, it's 1226 right now, but as soon as I turn the computer on, I go here. It's, it's not even a question. Um, so I, I kind of went and queued this up already as step one, post in the morning. This is a picture that I took the other day leaving the office. It was a beautiful day. It's got Greater Louisville Inc. right there at Metro Chamber of Commerce. And in my post, I said, who is ready to see some leaves on those trees? There's no place more beautiful than downtown Louisville in the spring. Swing by Greater Louisville Inc. when it warms up and see for yourself. So this is a really easy one for me to knock out. It's, it's engaging. I asked who is ready for spring. Maybe it's not so direct that people are going to think that I'm asking them to comment, but hopefully people will. Um, I talked about downtown Louisville, which is where we're at. I tagged Greater Louisville Inc., my employer. Um, this is a nice, easy one. It's just a picture that I took. <laughs> I do these all the time. So we're gonna click post there. And there you go. So again, preferably it would be in the morning, but you know, the seminar is in, uh, at noon, so that's okay. Okay, so we posted, step one, done. Step two, see the notifications over here? These just rack up constantly. Once you start posting and get more engagement, there's going to be constant, constant, constant um, engagement with your post, which is it's just so much fun. Okay, so as you can see, the most recent, recent engagement is at the top. Here's exactly what I do. I go to this top one. I open it in a new tab so that I don't lose my place. I'm a little, little quirky with this, but it's my process and it works. So uh, Blackbeard Espresso just opened back up downtown. I was super stoked about it. Um, so I went there and got a coffee and wanted to make sure all of my network understood that they were open and, um, you know, encourage them to visit the business. Unfortunately, they don't have a LinkedIn page. You'll run across that kind of frequently. So, um, I wasn't able to tag them, but if they did, I definitely would have. So we got 38 reactions for comments on this. I haven't seen any of this. So again, what I was telling you after you post, you're going to look at your engagement connect with your second degree connections. So this little button right here, you're gonna press that and it's gonna take you to everyone that engaged with your post. Maybe we'll find some second degree connections. Maybe we won't, looks like we don't on this one. That's okay, sometimes that happens. But as you can see, if you scroll all the way down, that's where those would be. So let's try another one because I really wanna show you, let's see. All right, so this El Toro post, it got a ton of traction, 153 likes, a lot of second degree connections, like this one from all over the country, really, which isn't surprising given um, Stacy, David, and Sean's networks. So again, we're gonna press this button. We're gonna scroll all the way down. And don't get me wrong, you can reach out to your first degree connections and open back up a conversation if you haven't talked to them in a while. It's a great opportunity to if they just reacted to some of your content, but that would take me a long, long, long time to, to do that. So I focus on these second degree connections. Great. So we see all these down here. This is where the value is. See all these, I, I've never talked to these people, probably not if we're not connected. They're all conversations and relationships that I can, I can start developing. It's very, very easy. So Adrian, See, we're gonna right click, open him in a new tab. Again, I'm a little quirky. I don't like to lose my place. So let's see what he's about. Okay, he's in New Albany, Indiana, German American Bank. They've recently started sponsoring some GLI events. It looks like I've already reached out and tried to connect to him. So that one's pending. Let's see if we can find one that's fresh. Okay, Casey. All right, great. Be soft. They're a GLI investor, very involved. I don't know Casey, so 
given that we both work in businesses that interact with each other a lot, I think that would be a valuable connection for me. So I'm going to click connect. And what I'm not going to click is send because that's going to send her a generic canned response that nobody wants to read. It's not the worst thing, but again, you want to stand out. You want to make these people know that you put some time and effort into reaching out to them and that you care enough to do that. So what we're going to do is click add a note. And here's exactly what I do. Simple. So <laughs> thanks for liking my Altura post. Would you like to connect? That's, that's it. That's all that there is to it. And then I'm going to click send. Okay. So that one's pending now. And then I've done that for a bunch of these already and I won't do it for the purposes of this webinar, but basically you would do that for all of these folks that you find that you think you would benefit from talking to in a networking situation, reach out and connect to them. That's it. Very, very, very simple. Again, deceptively simple, but once you know it and you start using it, you'll start to see the results. Okay. So I've shown you how to post once a day. We've shown you how to, how to look at your engagement. Um, you know, again, here's the mural, here's the mural post that I referenced earlier. People still talking on that one. Um, engage with the comments too. always do that. That's, that's a conversation for another day, but you know, other people will start talking to each other. Just be a catalyst for conversation. It's, it's a ton of fun. And uh, once you find your groove, it, it's really so rewarding to have a platform that just creates so much value. You just have to sort of, you know, put in the work and, and extract it and, um, you know, wait for it to bloom. But once it does, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really incredible. So we posted, we've engaged with our network. Start a conversation is what's next, right? So let's go to our messages. This is where all of your messages will live. So as you can see here on the left, these are all unread messages. Um, you can see the timestamp, March 2nd, March 2nd, March 2nd. These are all yesterday that I've been having, March 2nd, March 2nd, March 1st. Uh, as you can see, there's you can juggle hundreds and hundreds of conversations at the same time. Not everybody's on LinkedIn 24 hours a day like I am, which is actually preferable because I would get nothing done. But, you know, people get back to you when they can and let things naturally unfold. You know, just get back to the conversation when people respond. So let's see. All right, here's Melissa. It looks like I reached out to her on Tuesday, the exact same way that I did Casey. said, thanks for liking my Altura post. Would you like to connect? So once people accept your connection request, they're going to fall in here into your messaging inbox. Now they're going to show unread like they did. Um, and then they're going to move down as you have other conversations, but it's going to, it's going to show up here, a little red dot, um, and let you know that you have a new, um, well, it's not really a new message because you sent the message, but it will show up as unread. And again, when I said sending a personal message related to the post, when you reach out to connect with people, once you start doing this so much, you might not remember wh why you connect to Melissa if you just said, would you like to connect? And you'll be totally lost. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. So referencing the post where you originally met these people is uh, uh, very key. So thanks for liking my Altura post, would you like to connect? Here's exactly what I always say. All right. So thanks for connecting. I always say thank you. And then ask a question. If you just say thanks for connecting, you will get totally nowhere. No one's going to reach out and say, great to connect. How, what kind of services can I get from you? That will happen that literally never. So start the conversation. Start it around what you started talking about. Whatever you would naturally talk about someone in a networking situation, just say that. So simple. Enter send it her way. Once she reads it, it'll show down as red over there. And that's it. Obviously, there's a lot more to go into as far as content you can post, you know, your sales strategy for having conversations. That's, that's not what I'm here to talk about. It's just the simple steps of posting and then reaching out to your um, uh, people that engage with your post and then just starting a conversation. 
That's it. And as you can see, um, the results show for themselves. I've got all these conversations going. Some are going to be probably clients or investors of GLAS, some aren't. But they're all valuable because there's something that I can do to help them. I'm really blessed in my role that I really can help a lot of people with what I do. So it's a little bit easier for me. If you've got a specialized industry, you know, this is going to be a little more nuanced for you. I completely understand that. But again, you still want to go to networking opportunities. You still want to talk to as many people as you can. So, so do that on here. This is, you know, when you can't do it in person, this is all you got. So if you start doing these um, three easy steps, very, very easy, you'll start to see these results. And then next time a pandemic rolls around, which hopefully isn't anytime soon, you can, um, you know, fall back on this and know that you still have a way to stay top of mind. But 100%, you should definitely add this to your daily routine. You will see results. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen. I'll kick it back over to Dave. Hopefully that was uh, made some sense to somebody. Um, Oh, yeah, it, it really did. I, I just want to say, Jordan, that, that was fantastic. I mean, and um, you've gotten a lot of, a lot of great uh, kudos here. There's, and there's people all on today from all over the country, Houston, and Idaho, and West Virginia, Tennessee. And uh, Lindsay uh, says, uh, fantastic advice, so simple yet so beneficial. And so um, thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. But we do have a absolute ton of questions. So why don't we just <laughs> dive, dive right in? So, um, so um, let's see here. Um, so um, Dwayne wants to know, he says he's, he's heard that posting every day might be too much. And he's had some contacts with some LinkedIn experts to say maybe three times a week or is better. Is there a theory that that it takes a day or two to reach your audience? Uh, he says he also heard that LinkedIn algorithms will target your most recent posts and previous posts. Previous posts gets less attention. What's your thought? Yeah, um, I would say it's worth looking into all those things. I guess I should have given a caveat whenever I, I mentioned that I have no idea how the LinkedIn algorithms work. All I can say is from my personal experience, this is the method that I employ is just once per day. Um, sometimes I don't get to it. Obviously, life gets in the way, but I try my best just to do once per day. Three times per day is great. If you can start there, absolutely fantastic. Start there, see where it gets you. Um, mm -hmm. You want to stay? That's totally perfect. Maybe I'm getting dinged for posting more than three times a week. I'm not sure. But as you can see, all the all the. Um, all the traction that my posts get as far as your most recent post taking precedent over older stuff, at least in my experience from doing this so long, that's not, that's not what I see. Sometimes they're wacky. Not every, not every uh, post is going to be stellar and sometimes they just fall off the map for whatever reason. So that's another reason to post consistently because you're going to keep, you're going to keep loading that feed with something that you think is valuable instead of just, hoping that the one that you post, you know, goes viral. Yeah. So yeah, three posts, three posts a week is totally fine. But yeah, I'm no expert in the exact mechanics of how that works. Yeah. Um, so Bill says he has a business account and a personal account. Should he post the same content on both accounts? That's a great question. There's a lot about LinkedIn that, again, I just don't know all about for um, and the reason why I said that this is, I wanted to keep this really simple is because every time I've started to look into things like business pages and LinkedIn sales navigator, I get overwhelmed and I've been using the platform since 2013, like very heavily. So sort of answer your question, but I don't, I'm not sure. I don't manage a business account. I would say just Google some best practices for that. I don't want to give you any, any um, bad advice. This is, this is solely, for your personal page. And that's how I use this mm -hmm. as far as business pages. I would just, I would look to the experts for that. Yeah. Uh, I know you've said this again, but uh, just got a question. So do you recommend the paid LinkedIn version or the free version? I, I would recommend the free version. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of time. There's a very steep learning curve for the paid version. It is definitely not cheap. And you can get all those results that I just showed you for absolutely zero dollars. So 
if someone here is thinking about using this strategy and I start sending it out, I don't think they would ever need the paid version unless they started becoming some, some super user. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ross says, uh, hey, Ross, he says uh, he's actually a financial planner. So oh, he, yeah. he'd like to know. Uh, how quickly or not uh, do you like to respond to messages? Is there, um, is it too soon or, you know, do you, is there a too soon or a too late? To, to like respond to someone? Saying yeah, something? yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. I say the best advice for that is just don't get too in your head. It's, you know, because I've been there. Whenever you start using this, it's unfamiliar. It's not what you're used to doing. You're probably thinking, am I saying too much? Am I responding too fast? Am I just to get, get that out of your head, just have a natural conversation, right? And mm -hmm. when you get your friend back or message them back, you're not worried about that. So I would just, I would just keep that in mind if that's helpful. Yeah. Mitch wants to know if you personally have had a viral post yet. <laughs> I don't know. So I would say some I've gotten around like a 10,000 view count. I don't know if that's considered viral you know, like 10,000 views, 200 or so reactions, maybe a hundred comments. I, I think that's pretty good engagement, especially from where I started yeah. uh, on, uh, you know, made it onto like news networks. Now <laughs> we'll get there one of these days. Yeah. Um, how do you screen or decide whether or not to accept an invitation from someone um, who, who, is, uh, who, who does not live in your area? Yeah, so this would be an incoming connection request is what I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's funny. As much as I use LinkedIn, those really don't come around for me a ton, which is okay. I'm not trying to get spammed by any and everyone. I'm happy to connect more than happy, but I, I find enough on my own. When people come in, again, I would just ask yourself, just think about, put yourself in the shoes of if you're in a networking group. Is this someone that you would want to be talking to if you could literally see above someone's head in a room where they're from, what their business is, you know, their LinkedIn profile, maybe they have a headshot, maybe they don't. You're going to get a feel as you start to have more conversations and start to have more connections on who's valuable for you to be connected to. So mm -hmm. your time, if, if you're trying to bump your numbers up, nothing against that whatsoever, accept them and, and go along your way, but it's sort of on an individual basis. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what about hashtags? Are they, uh, are they worthless these days? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to totally say I have no idea. Every now and then I'll throw one in there, but I'm just not a hashtagging guy. So <laughs> I, I never use them. Mm -hmm. All the, I would, again, say look to the experts for that as far as best practices go on things like this and using a business page. Just a quick Google search and you will find a plethora of of free knowledge out there that will definitely help you there. But I am of absolutely no help as far as hashtag goes. <laughs> um, so the more your network grows, the more connections become um, numbers that you don't association with. Is that right? That you don't associate anything with? Let me try to dissect that here. So, I guess what this person is saying is that the more engagement that you have and the more people you reach out to, your the fear is that all of these people will just become just another number. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is, I'm glad you brought that up. That is where starting the conversation is key. So once you connect with these people, if you did not start a conversation and open that up and start to get to know them and you know find some value or what have you, wherever that's going to go, then absolutely. They're just going to become a number. You're never going to remember who these people are. It's not really going to be much use to you. Now, not everybody responds to outreach of the conversations. I can go into that. Those people, I mean, you, you give it a shot. And if they don't respond, then that's okay because you've got more people to talk to. But as long as you put in the effort to start the conversation, then that minimizes that fear. So again, you can, you can do it. Um, and you can take the time to do it methodically, but as long as you reach out and talk to them, then yeah, they're not going to become um, just a number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So what are your thoughts on writing LinkedIn articles? Do you, do you ever do that? Yeah, uh, great topic. Again, I'm going to say I, I'm not the expert on this one either. I don't. So but what I just showed you is literally what I do. It's super effective and simple, at least for, for my own. Now, when I was a financial advisor, I did post some articles. They were totally horrendously awful because they had to go through compliance and they were dry as toast. But I did it just so people could see I was posting some stuff. So, again, sorry to uh, keep giving this answer, but I, it's the best one, I think. Mm -hmm. Just Google search on LinkedIn articles and you will find people a lot smarter than me that can tell you exactly how to utilize those. Yeah. Um, is there a way to download your contact list in a database or Excel? No. Can you elaborate on that? No. <laughs> that's just, that's that's just the answer. Not. I think LinkedIn makes it so so that it's less easy to uh, spam people, you know, yeah. and mass emails or or harvest. It's their data, so I don't think they let you have that. If you go to um, your profile and go to your connections, you can see a list but you're not going to be able to download it in an Excel spreadsheet or anything. Yeah. So on, uh, on Monday morning on my way into work, um, I got, I got my LinkedIn popped up on my phone and it was your post <laughs> about, uh, about today's event. Um, tell, tell us what happened after that. And I'll, I'll tell you my experience as well. What happened after that? Let's see. Yeah. So yeah, I, I obviously want a lot of people to come to this. I think there's a lot of value in the presentation and posting on LinkedIn is it's like inception style. That's where <laughs> you want people to, to see the stuff. So I posted that. I encourage people to engage with it by saying, if we had originally met on LinkedIn, comment below. I asked some of my network to share it. So there's obviously more strategies involved in getting your content out there that I went into today. And I'm happy to talk to you about that. But I think it got some pretty good traction. Hopefully it got some people to come here today. Yeah. And and those some of those connections reached out to me because you had tagged me on that as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I made sure to tag Dave and SBDC, obviously best practices doing that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that yeah. um, that and that went on quite actively for two days. So that was uh, that was awesome. So um, we have some questions about um, you know, when you um, when you're writing your your messages, the content. I mean, is it always just that simple, or do you try to vary it up, or, or how do you come up with this stuff on a daily basis? You know. That's yeah. So I would say once you do this for long enough, and this is this is entirely my experience, but I'm just an average person, and I started using this just like every average person. So it can be your experience too. That you'll find your rhythm, you'll find your groove again. I'm really fortunate that I work in the business community. So anything Louisville business related, I'm happy to have that go out as a post of mine. So that people know that I know about it and I'm sharing it and it matters to me. So I've got a lot, a lot more content than, than your average person. So um, I would say here's, here's sort of the, the rule that I used to go by pretty, pretty, um, pretty hard fast. So on Monday mornings, I would always post something motivational. People love that. It's super easy to find motivational content. Picture, you know, like something to gas people's tanks up. Um, and that was it. You know, people like that. And then a couple of days a week, I would post uh, maybe some news, you know, something that was exciting, like I did with El Toro. And then um, one day a week, I would post, and this is when I was a financial advisor, one day a week, I would post something that was specific to how maybe I had helped someone recently or specifically um, how I could help anyone in the network. Again, <coughs> you always wanna veer from being too salesy. No one really responds well to that. But if you tell stories about, I mean, think about if, you know, your typical BNI group, they, they often tell stories about who they've helped recently to give people an idea of like, oh, this is a person that I could refer to you. Talk about that, you know, talk about how you've helped someone find success. but. As you do it more and more, it'll it'll start to become easier. But some days I log on and I'm just like, I got nothing. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to share today. Maybe I just take a break for that day and and go on to the next one, or maybe I scroll through and find someone else's post that I think is really good and share that. That's always good. But you want to make sure the majority of them are something that you are creating yourself. Mm -hmm. 
What um, what would you recommend if you have been one of those people that just, you know, accept every invitation and you've got like a list, you've never engaged with any of them? What, what would be the first step? Would you filter through that and try to start conversations individually or just start posting and see what happens with your list? Or well, um, that's that's a tough one. I have no <clears throat> I have no strategy or history really with with utilizing say your current network for something like that, I would say, think about what you'd say to that person. Again, I keep going back to this, but it's the simplest way to think about it in a networking event, you know, Hey, how have you been? Or saw this recently about your company. You wanted to reach out and say, Hey, find something relative to relevant to open the conversation back up with. Um, that's definitely a, something that you can, that you can look into as your current network. But, um, but yeah, I would recommend just doing this and start having new conversations and, whatever your time allows, because if you continue to do this, it will 100% take up every single second of your day if you let it. <laughs> Let's see, well, that looks like about all the questions we have today now. Um, so unless somebody wants to pop something in there really quick. So I'll just say, while someone may be writing something, you can find me on LinkedIn. Obviously, it's super easy to find. Um, I think my spelling and my name is probably in the email. Reach out, connect if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or have more nuanced questions, or maybe you didn't want to put it in the chat. More than happy to help. I, I have conversations like this all day long, and I'm really uh, passionate about it from my perspective and from my role because it's, again, I started as a 25-year-old financial advisor. <laughs> it's, that's about um, as low as you can be as far as the networking sphere goes. And now I get to work at Greater Louisville Inc., the Chamber of Commerce, and um, help connect hundreds and hundreds of people. And it's just just through doing this. So more than happy to help you advance your career, expand your network, and um, you know answer any additional questions you may have. Um, so Margaret wants to know. She says, um, "What about CRM software that lets you uh, do it ahead of time? Are they effective?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, so something like, I'm guessing she's probably saying something like Hootsuite, where you can schedule your posts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I looked into that for a, a brief period of time for my own, and I sort of trialed it um, for myself and saw if I used it and if I could keep up the habit. Because, again, forming a habit is what it's all about, and it it didn't work for me. I, I didn't think, and that was me thinking that I needed to post three times a day. So going back to your earlier comment, mm -hmm. probably wasn't a smart idea for that. But yeah, you can do that. You can do that, no problem. I would say that one thing you're going to lose is sort of like the late breaking edge of things. So going back to the El Toro post, that was like hot off the press. That happened that morning, shared it out. No one had seen it yet, probably. So if you schedule your posts out, say a week in advance, if, if the payoff of getting it done then so that you won't forget to do it every morning is there hundred percent do it. You just got to find the rhythm that works for you. Well, what would you say would be the, uh, the biggest mistake that, that you would see someone who just kind of getting started out, what, what would be that mistake that they would make you think? Yeah. So if you get to the point where you have the conversation, you've done a lot of work, you posted something that was irrelevant and engaging someone who's not in your network, engaged with it and you connected with them, though, you know, those are a lot of hurdles you got to jump through. You know, not everybody accepts your connection request. That's a hundred percent. You know, it's a filter. So when you get to that point and this person's connected with you and you have their virtual ear and then you start to do the hard sell, <laughs> you know, you start to say, when can we meet for coffee to talk about your uh, life insurance or something like that? Yeah. <clears throat> that's a, that's a no, no, don't do that. Um, and you'll get, you'll get better at it. Don't be too hard on yourself as far as naturally making the conversation go where you want it to go because you, you have an agenda. You're trying to provide value for this person. I don't have conversations with all these people just to chat about the weather. Um, nobody has time for that. LinkedIn is the place to network and try to find business opportunity and everybody gets that. So I would say just the, um, finding your way around the natural conversation is a little hard. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, the, you know, your, your steps are, you know, posting regularly. That's kind of what builds your, your network. 
And I think uh, the second takeaway that I've taken from what you've talked about is like, don't don't really overthink what you're doing, and then um, and then just be natural and conversational at the end, right? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 simple. So you wouldn't um, just think of it as as your virtual networking virtual networking room. You've got to network. It's valuable to you. It's how you meet people. You walk up and talk to them, which is the same thing as inviting them to connect, and then you talk to them, which is the same thing as sending them a message. It's, it's really, really simple. And it's, but it's, again, I keep stressing that it's, it's so simple that you might not think it's really going to get where you want to go. And it's, it's in a day, it's not in a week. It's not in a month. It's not in a year. It might not just totally being honest with you. It takes a long, long time uh, to get where I am now, but over time the momentum builds and you'll start to see some results and, You'll start to figure out how to use all this stuff and um, it'll start to be valuable. Yeah. This was awesome. This was great. It's so simple. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's like that advice. If you want to get in shape, like eat right and go to the gym, it, everybody knows it works, but if you do it or not, it's an entirely different story, but you don't, you don't have to go to the gym to do this or lifting heavy weights. You just have to click on your computer a couple times in the in the morning and then you know just watch the magic happen it just takes some time <laughs> nice well, jordan thank you so much this has been great happy to be here thank you for the opportunity dave and again if anyone has any other questions linkedin is where you can find me um you'll go right in my little message queue there and i will get back to you as soon as i can yep and it uh, looks like ryan put your uh, linkedin uh, link there on the chat so people can kind of click on that already and start connecting with you. There you go, go Ryan. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks again, Jordan. And thanks everybody for, uh, for joining us today. This has been hope very valuable for me. I hope it'll be valuable for you and um, have a good Wednesday. We'll see you next week. Thank you again, Jordan. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.